Now is the time for reasoning patriots to uphold and defend American values and traditions we hold sacred. I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Those were the last patriotic words of Captain Nathan Hale, Continental Army, executed by British forces in Manhattan, New York, September 22, 1776. Nathan was born in Coventry, Connecticut in the year 1755. By many accounts, he was the quintessential all-American boy with a bright future. He graduated from Yale University in 1773 as an honor student at the age of only 17. He was known as an intelligent, athletic, charismatic young man and was well-liked by his friends. Then, in 1775, the battles of Lexington and Concord erupted and the Revolutionary War started. Nathan enlisted in the Connecticut militia and quickly rose to the rank of first lieutenant. His militia unit deployed for action in the Siege of Boston, but Nathan was unable to participate due to a prior contractual teaching agreement that prevented his absence. However, he was still very much involved with the Revolutionary War and received letters from colleagues fighting the British. In 1775, he received correspondence from a close friend and confidant saying, Was I in your condition? I think the more extensive service would be my choice. Our holy religion, the honor of our God, a glorious country, and a happy constitution is what we have to defend. Benjamin Talmadge, Letter to Nathan Hale, 1775. Shortly thereafter, Nathan joined the ranks of the fledgling Continental Army. In September of 1776, he volunteered to go behind enemy lines and report on British troop movements in the New York area. At the time, Nathan was a member of America's first spy agency named Knowlton's Rangers, which was commissioned by George Washington himself to collect much needed intelligence on the British armed forces. While undercover in New York, Nathan was brought to the attention of British forces by loyalists, suspecting him of being a revolutionary patriot. He was eventually captured and brought before British General William Howe in Manhattan, New York. General Howe charged Nathan as an illegal combatant to the Crown of England and sentenced him to death by hanging. He was executed in Manhattan on September 22nd, 1776. Nathan was only 21 years old when he died for his country. The eyewitness record of the young patriot's death comes primarily from the British military personnel of the time. Frederick Mackenzie, a British officer, wrote, He behaved with great composure and resolution saying he thought it the duty of every good officer to obey any orders given him by his commander-in-chief and desired the spectators to be at all times prepared to meet death in whatever shape it might appear. The last words spoken by Nathan Hale at his execution may have been inspired by a play that Nathan, most colonists, and the British would have been very familiar with at the time. Below verse is from Joseph Addison's play Cato, A Tragedy, first performed in 1713. How beautiful is death when earned by virtue. Who 
would not be that youth? What pity is it that we can die but once to serve our country? Shortly after Nathan's death, one of his college tutors, Ennius Munson Sr., wrote the ballad to the memory of Captain Nathan Hale, honoring the young patriot's sacrifice for his country. This was also published in Songs and Ballads of the Revolution, collected by F. Moore in 1855. And the ballad says, Hate of oppression's arbitrary plan, the love of freedom and the rights of man, a strong desire to save from slavery's chain the future millions of the Western Maine, and hand down safe from men's invention cleared the sacred truths which all the just revered. For ends like these, I wish to draw my breath, he bravely cried, or dare encounter death. And when a cruel wretch pronounced his doom, replied this well, for all is peace to come. The sacred cause for which I drew my sword shall yet prevail and peace shall be restored. I've served with zeal the land that gave me birth, fulfilled my course, and done my work on earth. Have ever aimed to tread that shining road that leads a mortal to the blessed God. I die resigned and quit life's empty stage, for brighter worlds my every wish engage. And while my body slumbers in the dust, my soul shall join the assemblies of the just. We are forever indebted to all the Nathan Hales of the Revolutionary War, Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, Iraq and Afghanistan, all wars fought by American patriots that gave the ultimate sacrifice for their nation by protecting the Constitution of the United States from enemies foreign and domestic, with not only words but with actions. We stand in awe of your bravery and passion for this great republic, for you are all true patriots committed to the cause to defend this great nation no matter the cost. Your battle cries can still be heard by all freedom-loving patriots of today. Our nation's warriors did not sacrifice all for nothing, for we shall honor and memorialize them by picking up the banner of liberty from those who have fallen and by mutually pledging our lives, fortunes, and sacred honor to preserving this great continental union so it may pass to the next generation. All true patriots must hold steady the line against those intent on destroying the legacy of great men and women who fought, founded, built, and died for this magnificent nation under God. True patriots of today shall continue the tradition of unyielding patriotism and be steadfast and prepared for duty when called to defend our heritage, beliefs, and our constitutional republic. There is nothing so likely to produce peace as to be well prepared to meet an enemy. George Washington, 1780. I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Nathan Hale, a true American patriot, 
1776. May God bless the United States.